I wanted to include this clip from Horizon Forbidden West, which was shared on Twitter by Chris Raygun, because it perfectly exemplifies the points I make within this video. What's shown here is Aloy constantly giving instructions of where to go, what's ahead, she just will not stop talking. And this is an example of, personally in my opinion, bad game design and bad player experience, which is kind of ironic based on some of the remarks made by some of the developers that we're going to go over within this video. But yes, yeah, stuff like this, it just has to stop because you have to trust the players to make their right decisions about how to move ahead and how to proceed and how to, you know, enjoy the experience and figure things out for themselves. Anywho, with that said, Elden Ring quite literally is taking over this AAA games industry. It just seems there's a lot of shock, surprise, and amazement with what From Software has accomplished here. Even myself, I'm not a big Dark Souls fan, never really been into these games, but I gave Elden Ring a try. I really went around exploring, and I've honestly fallen in love with this game. I'm 35 hours in, and I, I honestly have no idea how many more hours to go, but it, I'm enjoying myself. I'm having a lot of fun with this I would say it's very different than the formula that we've seen, and that's kind of the core of the issue here for a lot of other developers, because it seems like everybody has come become accustomed to how a AAA video game, especially an open world video game, has to work. It has to have quest markers at every turn. It has to have these side quests right there. It has to have, make sure the player knows exactly what to do. Pretty much you need to be baby fed every single part of the experience, and to a lot of people it just gets repetitive, repetitive and annoying. And there's been this logical, you know, feeling that a lot of us have had. And it's like, where is the next step for this open world genre? Or what, what is going to be next for video games? Because whenever I see an, a game's gonna be open world, I just kind of scoff at it because I already know exactly what it's gonna be. There's gonna be lots of collectibles. There'll be some boring side quests that I don't really care about. And every once in a while, there is a video game, fortunately, that does have some good side quests, but it doesn't really shake stuff up. Like Ghost of Tsushima, I really did like that game, but it still is very much just the typical open world formula. To some, that's amazing, they loved it. To myself, I thought it was it was fine. Even Days Gone, a game that I really did like, and I know people have mixed feelings on that, it's the same thing. You got all of the basic open world stuff. So Elden Ring comes along, and it very much just throws you in. It says, well, go out and make things happen, pretty much. And you have to pay attention to what uh, NPCs tell you about for quests. There isn't this check mark list that's gonna pop up and tell you where to go. And for a lot of developers, they do not like that. They are very upset because they see their games, especially Ubisoft developers like Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, their games get 70, 80 review scores, and here's Elden Ring getting a 9, let's see, actually I can pull it up right now, on Open Critic, a critic average of 96 out of 100. 98% of critics recommending this, PC Gamer giving it a 90 out of 100, Eurogamer calling it essential, IGN 10 out of 10, Metro 9 out of 10, you've seen all these review scores, it's just truly, it's a big surprise to myself. I did not expect this. I know a lot of Souls fans really had high expectations and it seems like many of them are very happy about this and myself being 35 hours in after just beating Star Scourge Radon, like I said, I have a lot more content to go, many more bosses. I think there's like, what, 90 something bosses in this game. There's a lot of bosses. I think I've only faced off about 20 to 30, many more to go and honestly I'm having tons of fun and many of you are as well because on Steam Charts this game is nearing almost 1 million concurrent players and it seems a lot of people are falling in love with this experience. Obviously, there have been some performance issues. Those things will be eventually solved. But the reaction from this AAA games industry has been rather interesting, especially the developers that have been making these games. And what's interesting is that another big release just came out called Horizon Forbidden West, another open world game from Guerrilla Games. And it really is unfortunate for those guys because back in 2017, they launched Horizon Zero Dawn, a well-received, well-reviewed game, open world also with dinosaurs. It's kind of the big draw robot dinosaurs and it was a good game, it's just it got overshadowed by Breath of the Wild. And yet again, here in 2022, Guerrilla Games has released a Horizon sequel right next to a game that is being called one of the greatest of all time, a revolutionary title. Just unfortunate timing. And yes, uh, Horizon Forbidden West is easily being overshadowed by all of the hype and excitement for Elden Ring. Now, this brings us to these comments made by a few developers. We have a Sony developer for, I believe it's Nexus Software owned by Sony. We have a Ubisoft developer who actually previously worked on Battlefield 2042. Just, I'm trying to hold back the laughter a little bit. And then we also have a Horizon Forbidden West developer. Now the Ubisoft developer, this is where things got sparked. He said, the fact that Elden Ring scored a 
97 Metacritic is proof that reviewers don't give a flaming poop about game user experience. My life is a lie. The Sony developer chimed in saying nor PC graphics, stability and performance, apparently. And then the Guerrilla Games developer chimed in saying nor quest design, really. So I guess they all have come to the conclusion that Elden Ring has done everything wrong and the way that they're making the games is the only way and that's just not how this works. Now I think the one thing I will say is Elden Ring is not a game for everybody. That That's one thing that I think a lot of people really need to understand because I see a lot of people really thinking that this is not a Souls game and it very much still is. The only difference is that if you're getting your ass kicked by a boss you can go off and do a bunch of other quests. You can go farm runes and whatever whatnot and gain strength, gain power and come back and really kick that boss's ass. That's the difference. Back with the older Souls games if you're stuck you're stuck. Now I think it really d is a disservice to From Software the work that they've done in this game to just say that this is Dark Souls but with an open world. There is truly so many surprises, so much fun every turn you go. That's what I love about this game. Some of it's, well not some of it, a lot of it is just straight up pain but it really is cool. The animations, the boss fights, it's just so much work and it really does prove to be worth it at the end. And you get some really awesome gear, all kinds of new abilities, so many different build options. That's what I love about Elden Ring so far. And every time I go on YouTube, I see another build. I'm just like, I didn't even know that was possible. There's just so many options in this game. That's what I love about this. And you see everybody with different types of builds. Right now I'm running a Confessor build, which right now has high enough uh, faith and intelligence. I have that sword of night and flame. I th believe that's what's called. Either way, it's uh, it's really a ton of fun to use and I've been just uh, grinding away trying to find new upgrades. That's my experience with Elden Ring. Now these developers, they just cannot come to terms with the fact that the formula that has been going on for the last 10 years is no longer working and people want to see something different. And yes, having everything pop up on the screen, that's just not going to work anymore. I've been seeing this specific image going around it mocks the Ubisoft formula saying if Elden Ring was made by Ubisoft and it's true you got message of the day microtransactions because that definitely would be there we also have press x to activate tarnish sense a to jump it's being baby fed you have all of these little things just being thrown at you and I get it there's a lot of users out there that definitely need this stuff and they appreciate it but I think every once in a while you need a title like Elden Ring to really shake things up and we need more games that are really trying to do this, not sticking to the status quo, I guess that's the best way to put it. Now, I will mention that this developer, apparently the Ubisoft developer, also had some more remarks about this. I can't verify this because their Twitter accounts are now locked, but he specifically said Elden Ring's user experience is so bad that I can only imagine FromSoft's devs smoking at their desks and using CRT monitors. It is worth mentioning that this Ubisoft developer was not alone with this opinion. We had a Ubisoft brand manager saying, This makes me wonder if players and press actually realize that for many years now, Assassin's Creed has allowed you to turn pretty much everything off in the UI. If your game looks like this, it's because you want it to. Giving players options to customize their experience is good and I understand that although the default option is pretty much just that silly image that somebody mocked up of what Elden Ring would look like if it was developed by Ubisoft and I guess you could say that to an extent although even though there is customization options the game is tailored to pretty much have all of this stuff all over the screen it's very different than what Elden Ring is doing we also had a Ubisoft tester say Assassin's Creed Valhalla can be fully enjoyed with a more minimalistic UI than Elden Elden Ring. I get the idea behind this comparison, but it's missing the point. From software games could benefit from better UI design without it negatively impacting the experience at all. Simple matter of ergonomy. And he would also continue saying if Ubisoft developed Elden Ring, players would be able to select diverse UI profiles with customizable options. Having a lighter UI does not make it automatically better, sure. Proof being with From Software games still being mediocre when it comes to interface and menus ergonomy, and I, that's subjective, honestly. But yeah, yeah, it definitely seems like these individuals are trying to throw some shade, I guess, at Elden Ring's design and trying to argue that the way that they've been doing it is working, but it just 
isn't. The point that they are clearly missing is that Elden Ring's minimal UI further complements the excellent game design. That is not the case with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. That game has a gigantic open world that is full of a lot of mediocre content. There isn't a feeling of surprise or wonder as you venture through a mountaintop or climb to the top of a castle or take a turn down a different path. The rewards are relatively the same always, and players have an expectation of what always is ahead. That's honestly why when you hear Ubisoft developers boast that this game has 400 hours of content, I just don't care because a lot of it is going to be exactly the same stuff, the same dungeon, the same bosses, the same fights, and honestly I just don't feel like it's worth the investment. While on the contrary, we have a game like Elden Ring, which has shattered my expectations so many times. It really is baffling the reaction that I've been seeing to Elden Ring. Like, I get it, this game's not for everybody, and... It just seems like there's jealousy and hatred over the fact that these games getting rewarded with such high reviews. Now, the one thing I will say is I really do doubt that these individuals are even playing these games, and that's kind of the issue, I guess, in a way, that they're not understanding what players are actually enjoying about this. And that's why my biggest hope with Elden Ring's success is that the main takeaway of all of these studios is not the difficulty, but how exploration is just so fluid. It's so enjoyable because everywhere you go, there's something that's engaging. Because, yes, when I go to a play Assassin's Creed, there's so much boring content. I go through a town of boring NPCs, and yes, I'm looking around for collectibles and stuff, and it just gets repetitive and it gets boring. And unfortunately, this is the formula that this entire industry has copied for the last decade, and it has barely changed. Yes, we have every once in a while a game like Breath of the Wild and now Elden Ring that do shake things up a little bit, and we'll hopefully continue to see that in the future. But either way, whenever we see the reactions like this, it really just goes to show that there's a lack of understanding about what players actually want from these games. Now, that is the reaction that those developers have had. There's a lot of other developers that completely disagree with that, including a former Ubisoft developer. This is actually what one of them said as an ex-developer of Ubisoft, who I was with for almost 10 years. I am not with those sentiments at all. Let it be heard, let it be noted that I lament greatly and with satisfaction that the Ubisoft formula that is permeated into all major AAA open world games is tired and rote. From quest design to user experience, everything about it. I just hate that every major AAA open world game has the same quest design, has the same checkpointing, has the same waypointing, all the same bells and whistles. Exactly. And just, I, I wish it would stop. I am thankful for a game like Breath of the Wild, which was doing a good job of breaking that mold, though it still had its hands in the Ubisoft formula, and now Elden Ring pushing as the anti-thesis to the standard open world format. Listen, I enjoy all the games I'm going to list, but there's definitely a problem when they all feel so samey. Ghost of Tsushima, Assassin's Creed, Horizon, Halo Infinite, Infinite, Far Cry, that list really could go on and on. Instead of always doubling down on what has the best mass market appeal and always doing exactly what the mass market expects, please start taking more risks. We like the comfort food, but at this moment, the entire buffet is just one type of bread. Another former Ubisoft developer who now works at WB Games Montreal gave his thoughts saying, having worked on games with checkpointing, delineated player objectives, waypoint markers, and I don't really care from software where gives F all about that. There is room for different user experiences. So much about game development is subjective, despite best efforts to quantify playtest results. So it's not the, like this entire industry, it's not every single developer that is bashing Elden Ring for getting good reviews, but there are some that there's just there's spite, there's jealousy over the fact that From Software did some brilliance here. Ultimately, this is something that we've been talking about for a long time. This is one of my big criticisms recently with Far Cry 6. It feels like Far Cry 3. Far Cry 3 felt just like Far Cry 4. Far Cry 4 felt like just Far Cry... They all feel like the exact same thing. And that's because there's barely any changes going on with the open world. Of course you have these new environments, you may have some new gadgets, but it's the same thing. Oh, there's no longer going to be any radio outposts. Well, guess what's replaced by that? There's mountaintops, or there's something else similar to that. And it gets, it goes on and on. Even Dying Light 2, a game that I really enjoyed the parkour and movement, it still had that basic formula for what an open world game is. And I don't think that Elden Ring's going to break that mold completely, but I do hope, like this developer just said, that we see more developers willing to take chances. And I get it, I think a lot of these games, they take five years to make and they cannot afford to screw things up, so they go with the safe option. 
And unfortunately, the safe option is just getting old and people are moving on and getting tired of that. It's the same thing that we saw with Call of Duty. Call of Duty kept on releasing over and over again. Everybody knew what to expect with a Call of Duty game and eventually, as we saw just recently with Vanguard, sales are now going in the wrong direction. I don't think that's going to be necessarily the case with all of the open world games to come because there's always going to be some game that looks beautiful or whatever, but I do think that things have to change in this industry. And I am glad the developer from Software, they came forward, they make a, made a great gameplay experience, and now hopefully we see developers build upon that. I honestly think right now, just after 35 hours into this, this is probably the best game I've played since Red Dead 2. And yes, I did like Red Dead 2, not necessarily for its gameplay, but more of its storytelling, so that's a totally different story. But every couple years, it's nice to have a revolutionary gaming experience that, you know, changes things. And I really do hope that Elden Ring, the lessons that are learned from this, is that you really got to give the players freedom to explore, trust them to make the decisions to go in whatever direction they want, and eventually, you know, fall along with the main quest line, or maybe just go all along and travel and have fun. I think we need much more of that, no more hand holding. That needs to stop, and uh, I think Elden Ring is a great example of why that needs to stop. Anyway, I feel like I'm rambling at this point, but I just wanted to give my two cents on this ridiculous complaints that I've been seeing from some of the developers in this gaming industry that just aren't understanding what players love about Elden Ring, and how it's not bad game design, which is just hilarious. It's just showing that people are tired of the usual open world formula, and what From Software has accomplished here is nothing short of remarkable, and there is many lessons that Ubisoft developers should learn from what From has done here. Although I probably should clarify, hopefully them learning isn't necessarily just copying, because they've done that before. Cough, cough, The Witcher 3, cough, cough, Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey, Valhalla, and whatever else is to come. Anyway, have you been playing Elden Ring? Have you been playing Horizon Forbidden West or something else? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below on this topic. But thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this video or if you found any informative value and make sure to follow my other social media accounts for updates on new videos links are always down in the description below i'm most active on twitter giving opinions on news that i do not always get into video form so do make sure to follow me over there also check out my discord for all sorts of discussion on games and again thank you for joining consider subscribing for more videos like this i'll see you later